This is the Skater 3D from Edelkrone, and it's a really interesting piece of budget filmmaking kit because you don't buy this assembled or even with all the parts, you have to 3D print the bulk of this and Edelkrone only provides the basic hardware, the bearings, the fasteners and that sort of thing. But that means that this is incredibly affordable if you have a 3D printer because the whole kit itself is only $29 US. Now I love the concept of this and it's not the first time that Edelkrone's done something like this, but is it something you should consider getting for your filmmaking kit? Well, let's find out. Last year I did a video on this. It's the Edelkrone Flex Tilt Head, but it's the 3D printable version that they have available on their website. Now you can buy the fully assembled aluminium version, which is heavier and a lot more expensive, but if you have a 3D printer, there's the option to actually print and assemble this for a much lower price. And I tested it out and look, you know, be warned with your ears. It's okay, it's a bit squeaky and definitely not as rigid or as uh, professional looking as its metal brother. But when I did that video, it was actually quite popular because the concept of 3D printing parts for actual usable hardware is actually pretty cool because you don't have to ship larger boxes, logistics is easier, and if you have the machine on hand with filament, the pricing is a lot more attractive. You just have to buy the basic hardware and you print the bulk of it. Anyway, they sent me this, the Skater 3D kit, and honestly, I just didn't do much with it for a while. But I was looking back on it and I was like, actually a little little sort of tabletop dolly sort of thing could be handy. So it's on my previous videos, you might have seen panning shots and that sort of thing. This is what I used to use a lot. This is a rail that would have a sliding dryland style carriage on it. And I would manually just push this along on a tripod to get those panning shots. But that's not compact, it's difficult to use. And you can buy proper versions of this with motors and that sort of thing or weights to keep it consistent. So the idea of this is it replaces the rail where you can get those panning shots or you can get a shot that's going in towards the subject or you can actually rotate it and make it turn in a tight circle to get revolving shots of a subject, which is pretty cool. So I thought I'd put it together and I'll tell you about my experiences. Now, I first tried to print this in ABS plastic, which is the same material I used to print the Flex Tilt Head. So ABS plastic is quite durable, it's quite tough. Uh, it does print at a higher temperature to PLA plastic, but it does have one drawback, and that is that it shrinks a lot more than PLA. Now with this one, I did print this on the Up Mini 2, and it's a little bit tight, does squeak, but it overall went together okay. The printer I used for the Skater 3D, however, is the Chidi Tech X Plus. Now that machine can print ABS as well as PLA, but what I found with the printed parts in the ABS is that they did shrink, which is kind of predictable, but they shrunk unpredictably. Uh, they held down to the print surface, but then would shrink in as they got away from the print surface and depending on how thick the cross-sectional area was. Which means that if you look at the sides of the parts, they where they should be vertical, they're not. Um, and that means that the dimensional accuracy of the ABS parts went right out the window and actually led me to doubt if Edelkrone had even put any uh, clearances in to their parts to allow for inaccuracies in the 3D print. Now the instructions are really good, they're really small <laughs> and simple. It comes with a few Allen keys, I recommend using like a, something like this instead of Allen keys though, better for your wrist. Uh, and then mostly it did go okay, together okay, but when it came to the bearing pockets on the wheels, the ABS parts were just just too out of spec, way too out of spec. You can really see it here with this wheel, just how poorly the finish is on some of it, where there was overhangs and that sort of thing. So I printed the wheels again in PLA plastic and they worked fine. So that's not Edelkrone's fault. They did allow uh, quite small clearances, 0.1 millimeter. I did notice in the 3D model, which you can get as a STEP or STL, by the way. So if you want to modify it in your CAD software, like Fusion 360, they did provide the STEP, which is pretty neat, but that's fine. So the wheels are PLA, the main body is ABS. And everything does tighten into place quite well because the main fastening points actually are threaded and tapped aluminium, except for the wheels, but that's just holding the two halves together. 
and there's actually a plastic ring underneath the o-ring which keeps those wheels fully concentric so you're not going to be worried about your 3d printer being out of spec too much it will actually slide really well um, i'm actually quite happy with the movement of this so as i mentioned the 3d printed version of the flex tilt head wasn't really up to scratch when it came to the rigidity of its all uh, metal brother but what about this the scatter 3d well i couldn't actually see a fully metal version on uh, Edelkrone's website. It looks like you used to have like a pocket folding version, which they don't sell anymore. So in terms of a really low cost sliding uh, dolly style skating mechanism, this is probably your best bet, at least from them. But how do you actually uh, use it? Well, you could just put your camera straight onto it like that, but that's not, give you, not gonna give you much freedom to tilt and change it around. So what I would say is you need like a, a a ball head or something similar, but I'm just going to use this flex tilt head and tighten it into place. You can be a bit rough with it actually, the parts are quite durable, at least, at least the ones I've printed. So what I can do is I can attach the camera, this is just <laughs> a very old Olympus Micro Four Thirds, which I only use for props because isn't it a bit of a curiosity filming, filmmaking equipment? How do you do it? Because I'm using my real camera to film this. I don't, yeah, anyway. Uh, so you could basically, if it was going towards a subject, straighten the wheels up, you could zoom into it like that. You have to change your focus, obviously. You can um, pan like that. Uh, but the really cool thing that I think this is actually kind of useful for is you can change the, the sort of steering of it, which will make it go into an arc. And then you can go around an object now, in my tests, I did find it was hard to actually keep the object centered as it went around. Um, maybe using some markings or something on the table would help. But I did struggle a little bit to keep the object in focus and centered as I revolved around it with this jig. But regardless, have a look at the results yourself and make your own decisions. So as you can see, you can get some pretty good shots out of this, but also as you can see, I had to use some uh, effects, specifically the warp stabilizer, because it was bouncing all around the place. You can see in these shots, without any stabilization at full speed, they just are not as smooth as they should be. You chuck the warp stabilizer on it, it does fix it and help quite a bit, but sometimes there was just a bit too much bounce. And I really do think it's not so much the skating portion of this rig, it's the flex tilt. 3D, I just really don't like it very much. Uh, having a look at these shots, it just bounces too much. So I would recommend going with a ball head as I mentioned, and that will make these shots a lot smoother. So that's the Skater 3D from Edelkrone, uh, which is actually pretty cool. I can see myself using this as long as these subjects can sit on a nice flat surface like the kitchen tabletop I had to use. It's not gonna be as, uh, as useful as a real slide where you can mount on a tripod, obviously and you will need a ball joint or something to actually, you know, angle the camera to be useful on it. But for $29 US, uh, I don't think you're gonna get anything cheaper than that. You do need access to a 3D printer, but as I said, the files are well designed and they went together pretty well. Um, and yeah, that's gonna do this video. <laughs> Really fun little thing. Uh, just as full disclaimer, they sent this to me ages ago and I said, look, if I'm interested, I'll do a review or video of it, which I've done now, but that was about it. No money's changed hands. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see future videos on Makers Muse, maybe consider subscribing, up to you. I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later. Bye.